Let's talk about the Folklokin Lyris. Hey everybody, it's Mitch, and welcome to my next video. Today we've got another Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 Prestige class video for you. And today, coming at you from the Complete Adventurer, we've got ourselves Folklokin Lyris. So, what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about what is the Folklokin Lyris. We're going to be talking about what it takes to become Folklokin Lyris. We're going to be talking about what you get as a Folklokin Lyris. And finally, we're going to talk about how good the Folklokin Lyris is and how you might use it in a build. So, let's get started. First off, what is the Folklokin Lyris. These guys actually have an incredible amount of lore. These guys are people who really blur the lines between many, many things. Warrior, the caster, woodland champion, like there's so many different things. As well as, they're also ones who are poets. They are bards and druids, but also they have a little bit of rogue in them. They're quite the mixed bag. And they have a lot of lore to them as well. They have a college, Folklokin College, and there's a ton of lore to that. It's a very interesting and special place. Definitely something to check out. It's on page 49 of the Complete Adventure if you want to check out some info on that. Really just kind of special and magical class that just believes in the harmony of all things. They're a very neutral organization and a very neutral class that just kind of believes in harmony and keeping things together. It's something. It's, it's hard to explain, really. Also, something that's very difficult. Only those who are very dedicated dedicated and become Folklick and Lyris. It's not an easy class to get into. So yeah, the Folklick and Lyris, it's something. Now that we've talked about what they are, let's talk about what it takes to become Folklick and Lyris. So to become a Folklick and Lyris, you're going to need a lot of stuff. So let's talk about skills first. You're going to need seven ranks in Decipher Script, Diplomacy, Gather Information, and Knowledge Nature, as well as Sleight of Hand. In addition, you're also going to need 13 ranks in Perform String Instruments. And for a final skill requirement, you need Speak Language Druidic. So that's that one's interesting. The only way to get that is to have a level in Druid. And you get it for free with that, but that's literally the only way to get it, unless you know somebody teaches it to you, but they can get in trouble for that. So pretty much you're gonna need a level in Druid. It has alignment restriction. It requires either neutral good or true neutral or chaotic neutral or neutral evil. So the only four alignments that you can be. The intersection between Druid and Bard makes sense. And there's a lot of overlap between the two, but those are the four alignments that both of them can do. And yeah, those are the ones that are required. So Okay, it works. And it requires spell casting. You have to be able to cast first level arcane and first level divine spell. So another requirement. And you also need the Bardic Knowledge class feature and evasion. Well, boy, that's a lot of stuff. So to qualify for all of that, you're going to need at least one level in Bard for Bardic Knowledge. And that'll get you your spell casting as well. You'll need at least one level in Druid to get Speak Language Druidic as well as the spell casting requirement. And then you'll probably want two levels in Rogue as well in order to get evasion. That's going to be tricky to get without two levels in Rogue. There's other other classes you can do to qualify and get evasion like ninja and scout and all those fun things. Spell thief also works. Those are options. You might want to go with rogue just considering everything. It's very very steep on requirements. It's not an easy class to get into at all. It's one of the hardest to get into in the game and the 13 ranks in perform does require that you have to be at least 11th level to start taking. So yeah it's it's something. It's not an easy one to enter. Now that we've talked about what it takes to get in, let's talk about what you get. First off a d6 hit dice not great not terrible but eh, it's not the best in the world they do get a good base attack bonus though as well as a good reflex and will save although their fortitude save isn't great uh, in terms of skills their skill list is extremely impressive as well as the fact that they get six plus in not the best skill monkeys in the game but they are really solid and they also get spell casting so every level they take will advance both their arcane and their divine spell casting fully so they get full advancement on both sides so that's massive. That combined with base attack bonus is you. Pretty sure this is the only prestige class in the entire game that gets full base attack bonus, full arcane casting, and full divine casting. So that's kind of massive. And that we're not even done. They also get bardic knowledge. So their bardic knowledge stacks with bardic knowledge they got from bard. So that's kind of cool. They can add their levels together to figure it out. You can add their levels together plus their intelligence to figure out your modifier. So pretty nice. They also get bardic music. So their level actually stacks with bard for bardic music for all forms of it including gaining new songs so that's actually kind of huge and they also get unbound so unbound it'll do two things first unbound will remove the druid's restriction of wearing metal armor and now they can wear light metal armor without any penalties that includes armor checks as well which would already be gone for bard so you can wear light metal armor and be able to cast all your spells completely fine that's pretty cool on 
top of that, it also just removes the multi-class experience penalty rule from you. You just can ignore it from now on. That's actually kind of nice. You just get unlimited free multi-classing forever once you've taken a level on this. And yeah, all those things that I mentioned, the exception of spellcasting, although I guess that one's still kind of, you get it all at first level. I mean, spellcasting you get at first level too, but you also get every other level. So yeah, this is huge. This gives so, so much stuff. Okay, I guess some of it advances every level, but yeah, all of this is at first level and there's you get nothing else after that. That's massive. Now that we've talked about what they get, which didn't take long, but there sure was a lot of it. It was just real simple to talk about. Let's talk about how good they are. The Lyrist. Well, they are extremely difficult to get into. Probably the hardest prestige class to enter out of any prestige class in 3.5, which is saying something. So that's a problem. I've tried making Lyrist builds in the past and it's really hard to make it work just because of how many prereqs they have. It's pretty nasty and a lot of them aren't great like those two levels of rogue you have to take that'll slow you down a lot in terms of progressing your cast in terms of what they get though full casting for arcane and divine and a full base attack bonus i mean that's just ridiculous plus bardic music advancement like that's massive now if you were to mix this with sublime chord that might be your best option in order to really make this work now the problem with sublime chord is its prereqs don't really match well with this really have to put a lot of work into making it happen but it can absolutely be done and if you take a one level dip in sublime court and then finish off your next nine levels with this you can get pretty dang good you can get your arcane casting at 20th level you'll have your divine casting at like 10th which isn't amazing but it's something and on top of that you're gonna have a 16 base attack bonus so you're gonna be quite competent in combat and be able to have four attack not terrible at all it's a pretty solid one and of course all those skills and if you're doing a bunch of stuff that's going to be requiring a lot of class levels yeah this one can be massive so yeah it can be really good but it's super niche and it's hard to work into a build but if it can be done oh boy there's also a lot of cheese that can be used to get in early if your dm allows that this class gets insanely good it really just depends it's a fun one it's a solid one i rather enjoy it let me know what you guys think down in the comments below i always love hearing from you also if you enjoyed the video consider giving it a like maybe subscribe to the channel for more dnd 35 content and ring that notification bell so you never miss out on a video. Also, down in the description below, there's a link to my Twitch as well as to my Discord. But anyways, as always, I'm Mitch. I'll be seeing you.